I'm Dawn Kissy, a business journalist, entrepreneur, and current Knight Badgett Fellow here at Columbia Business School. It's an absolute pleasure to be here today with Professor Amit Kandawal, who is the Jerome A. Chazen Professor of Global Business at the school. Professor Kandawal is also a senior scholar with the school's Chazen Institute, where his research focuses on emerging markets and global business. He has explored globalization, protectionism, and its impact on a number of developing economies. Today, we'll delve into this trend and discuss the impact on what global trade has and what, if anything, should be done to reverse it. Professor Kandawal, welcome. Thanks so much, Don. It's good to see you. Um, where do you see the new U.S. administration moving on trade? They're obviously not going to move too quickly. We've got the Paris Agreement. We've got the TPP. He's got so many things to confront right now. But in terms of global trade, the huge elephant in the room is U.S., China, China, U.S. Where is that relationship going? And what do you feel needs to be implemented in terms of policy and potential full-on reforms to kind of rein this relationship in to the point where it doesn't send the whole world into a tailspin. You got the two biggest economies going head to head. It can't be good for the rest of the world. So I wanted to know what your thoughts are on, on potential new policy and in what direction they should move in. So it's a, it's a great question. So, but let me let me take a, a one step back and, and and talk about the the U.S. China trade war, um, sure. and then that that'll be a good good way to think about what the what the Biden administration is likely to do. Okay. So so where we sit today is uh, is is kind of enmeshed in a, in a trade war between the two largest economies in the world. What are these, what are these numbers, what, what are the size of the numbers involved? Well, 20, in 2018, when the US imposed um, tariffs on, on China and not just China, but also other trade partners, um, we ended up imposing tariffs on about 20% of our imports. Um, so 400, $420 billion. Um, and the tariffs on those imports that were targeted Go up about about twenty percent. Okay, so think about it as that like, like a sales tax going up by 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 twenty percent. And this is this is pretty pervasive across the economy. Um, the U.S. tracks twenty five thousand goods uh, that get come in through the borders every year, and and we imposed a tariff increase on about seventy thousand of those. And so by by some of the analysis that I've done, this is. Um, this is probably the largest return to protectionism that the U.S. has, has kind of uh, experienced in, uh, since, uh, since the Great Depression. And uh, our trade partners didn't sit silent, so they end up imposing tariffs on U.S. exports. Um, so the you know, $133 billion worth of U.S. exports are targeted by, by, by tariffs, by, mostly by China, but also other countries as well. It's about 9% of U.S. exports. Tariffs are going up by, by about 15%. And I spent uh, quite a bit of time um, over the past couple of years trying to get a, get a handle on, on what this kind of very large uh, increase in protectionism has done to the U.S. economy. Um, and one of the things I've realized in, in, in discussing this with uh, uh, in, in the classroom has been that uh, I think historically, if you ask business leaders to think about the types of risks that they face, uh, kind of big macro risks, they often talk about um, interest rates, for instance. Yeah. Um, and interest rate risk is something that people really, really understand or have a good handle on because the FOMC meets uh, eight times a year, and you know it's talked a lot about the news. And and what I noticed that when when the tariffs when the tariffs came came raining down, there was a lot of uh, there was a lot of uncertainty about both you know what that means to the economy and how the tariffs actually propagate. And so it's useful maybe to spend a little bit of time just uh, just a moment to kind of spelling out how how a tariff actually affects an economy. Sure. So. Um, so, so what is it? What is a tariff? A tariff you can think about as a, as a tax on a, on an imported good. When the U.S. imposes a tax on an imported good, um, in principle, consumers should be worse off. So, imagine you're importing a good for hundred dollars. The, the 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 U.S. government imposes a tariff of twenty percent. Uh, that should make U.S. consumers better off. It's actually not um, not immediately clear that that's always going to be the case because if I'm the importer of the good. And my government's imposing a twenty percent tariff on the on the Chinese import that I'm that I'm buying. I might go to my Chinese supplier and say, "No, lower your price down to eighty dollars, so that when I apply the tariff, it's it's back to basically a hundred dollars." And for all of twenty eighteen and twenty nineteen, essentially, uh, the Trump administration was basically saying that that was what was going on. That 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 the uh, that the Chinese or the foreign partners were quote unquote eating the tariff. Mm -hmm. um, and so this came down to just an empirical question 
uh, when we looked at the data, was to see what what was happening at the prices of the border um, when you impose this tariff. And it turned out that effectively the price of $100 was not changing at all. So that when you impose the tariff of 20%, the, the tariff inclusive cost of this product was $120. So really, you know, during this trade war, what, what, what this analysis has shown, it's been, been shown in other papers as well, is that the US consumer is really taking it on the chin from, as a result of these, of, these, of these tariffs. Now, the flip side of that, so, so this is kind of one effect of the trade war is that US consumers uh, particularly the, the consumers of imported goods are, are going to be worse off. Sure. Right? Now, who's going to be, the, you know, why are we imposing the tariffs? There should be some gain somewhere. Who's going to gain? Well, it's going to be the producers, the domestic producers who are likely to gain because now the imported goods are becoming more expensive. How much they gain kind of depends on a few factors. How substitutable is the Chinese good with the good that I produce? If it's very substitutable, that's going to be great for me as a domestic producer because the prices of Chinese good has just gone up. $20. And so everyone's going to flock to my good. Um, on the other hand, uh, maybe I'm using Chinese inputs to produce my good. And so now my costs are going up, right? So that's going to kind of blunt the effect of, of the producers. And at the same time, my foreign trade partners, China in particular, may be imposing a tariff on the product that I actually make. So now, whereas I was selling it to more Chinese consumers, they, they may be less interested in buying for the same reason that the U.S. is U.S. consumers are less interested in buying imported goods in sure. a trade war. So, so hugely helpful. Um, this is really helpful, and I really like how you've delved into tariffs. I want to pivot a little bit and talk more about your research. I know that you focused on certain areas as a senior scholar with Chazen. What are you looking at right now, and what do you think the implications could be if widespread research or even finite research? on globalization and trade were to come out even in a month from now. Do you think the Biden administration would leap on your research? Tell us about your findings. Yeah, so, so, um, so when, when you try to tally up what the overall effect of, of, of the trade war is, you have consumers, producers, and government revenue, what we end up finding is that the US economy lost about 20, $25 billion worth um, as a result of the trade war. Um, and that kind of that number masks a, a pretty large loss to U.S. consumers. Um, that's where U.S. producers and, and government revenue are, are, are taking up, uh, kind of offsetting some of the loss. And so that's a $25 billion loss to the U.S. economy, which, which I think is a self-inflicted wound to some extent, because, you know, to the extent that you think that jobs are going to come back as a result of the trade war, um, the empirical evidence has shown that employment hasn't gone up uh, mm -hmm. in the sectors that receive the protection. And to be um, clear, you're referring to the U.S. economy. I'm referring entirely right now to the U.S. economy. And so, and so, uh, and so now if you think about from the, from, 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 from the current administration's perspective, I think where the current administration sits is that they're, they're likely to be cautious. I think one thing that the Trump, Trump administration was very, very instrumental in doing is uh, changing the debate about, about terrorists. It used to be the case that, um, politicians from both parties were roughly in agreement uh, mm -hmm. on a general free trade, free trade strategy that the U.S. Per, US um, pursues. And I think the Trump administration was very um, effective in, in changing the nature of that debate. So I expect that, that the current administration will be pretty cautious um, on lifting of the tariffs, particularly with respect to China, because they may be holding the Chinese tariffs um, in the cards for a, for a grander, grander strategy of, of uh, uh, that would in, uh, include not just uh, the economic consequences of, of uh, kind of deteriorating um, relationships, but also the political consequences. Okay. So Professor, what do you think the big takeaway is from your current research at the Chazen Institute? So I think the, the big takeaway is that the, the, the tariffs, I think, were a self-inflicted wound on the U.S. economy for, for the stated objectives of what, what the administration was hoping to get out of the tariffs. Uh, I don't think have been materialized. And we've seen price increases and, an, and a general loss to the US economy as a result of the tariffs. At the same time, I think the bigger thing, which I haven't quantified, but I, I truly think is, is important is I think we've lost um, a lot of goodwill amongst uh, our, our allies and trade partners as a result of the trade war. And this has come through a, var a variety of ways, in particular, the way in which the US has dealt with the World Trade Organization um, in the past couple of years. And I, and I worry that um, even if the Biden administration is able to make some commitments um, towards a more integrated uh, global economy, 
Uh, the worry that I have is that trade partners will say, well, this is likely to last only four years and a, and a new administration would, would, would immediately roll it back. And so I think that's one of the reasons that I think the, maybe, maybe the major takeaway is that the, the uncertainty that, that, the, that, the, that the trade war has, has kind, of, kind of pushed into the global economy, I think is likely to, to be quite high for some time. As of sure, it makes perfect sense. And when you talk about um, the possibility of this being rolled back, it all circles back to one big issue many people on the global stage you know, raised concerns about was U.S. credibility. Can we trust the U.S. on this? Can we trust the U.S. on that? And when it comes to U.S. China, can we trust them on this? So it's really interesting. And I'm sure myself and everyone in the CBS community are looking forward to more findings from your research. Thank you so much, Professor Kandawal. Thank you.